Though I'm happy to see multiple private nuclear startups and proud that a good chunk of them are located in the U.S., America is not leading the charge, or at least not in the way that it should be. To make matters worse, private institutions are constrained by regulations that were never intended to foster innovation. Today, I'm going to share my Christmas list in regards to what I would like to see change in U.S. nuclear policy. I'm Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic. Again and welcome to Rock Logic. I am your host Sean Kenny, and today I want to go over my insights on the nuclear industry and discuss the regulatory solutions uh, to help the U.S. be a global leader in fostering nuclear innovation. Before I do, I just want to thank everyone who has subscribed, watched, and commented on this podcast. Your support has been fueling this channel's growth, and I look forward to some of the things that we will be discussing in the show uh, going into the new year. As I've been getting helpful suggestions on what topics to focus on, I've also been receiving a fair amount of encouragement. I've also seen that there is a considerable amount of frustration due to the slow progress that's been made on this industry. I've shared these concerns for well over a decade, and after a fair amount of research, uh, I believe I've come to some conclusions on what can be done. To be specific, I have five things that the U.S. government can do to reverse the slow trend and to accelerate the molten salt reactor technology to the forefront of a clean energy future. So here it is, my nuclear innovation Christmas list. Number one. Direct regulatory funding for the NRC to foster innovative technology. This is probably going to be one of the more boring requests on my list, but it's the primary solution to the reason why the U.S. has been so stagnant in nuclear innovation over the past four decades. If you watched episode two of this show, you remember that the main reason why the light water reactor was chosen was that the Navy needed them to power submarines and thus agreed to pay for the first mover costs associated with its development and commercialization. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission is the gold standard for licensing safe nuclear power plants in this country. They have over 20,000 pages of regulatory code that tells them how to license commercial reactors for utilities. Unfortunately, all of these guidelines are for licensing light water reactors. If I have a reactor design that operates differently from how a light water reactor works, they won't give me or any company for that matter a similar technology to license or build a prototype, let alone a full-scale commercial power plant. To make matters worse, since the passing of the 1990 Omnibus Reconciliation Act, the NRC has been a 100% cost recovery organization. What that means is that unlike almost every other government uh, regulatory agency, the NRC doesn't get its funding from Congress or the American taxpayer. They get it from collecting licensing fees from utilities that operate nuclear power plants and from one-on-one engagements with individual companies at the going rate of $270 an hour. It's not an inexpensive thing to engage with the NRC. Now, they are not opposed to changing the regulations to accommodating molten salt reactors. If you're a private company looking to build them, they'll tell you that you can put in an application and that the NRC will build the framework with you so that these reactors can be licensed and operated safely. What they won't tell you, however, is how much it will cost and how long it will be before you can start building one. At that point, after two decades and two to three billion dollars spent, you're done with your paperwork and you can start making money. So clearly this doesn't fit with the time or cost constraints of the global energy market. To paint a picture of how absolutely ridiculous this is, let me go into a fantasy scenario here. Imagine you're a nuclear startup like Flybe Energy or Elysium Industries, and somehow you manage to convince a billionaire like Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos to write you a check for $10 billion. The purpose of this is to use every cent to develop the company and the technology and get it to market as quickly as possible. It may cost you up to $2 billion to get things started, hire staff, and build a commercial prototype. It may cost you another $5 billion uh, to build a factory for mass production and to develop the materials and supply chain needed uh, to scale production and reduce costs. And finally, I got to spend what's left over to build the regulatory framework to sell the technology to utilities. At this point, I've spent $10 billion to be the first to market, and I've gotten the NRC to write the regulations to favor MSR development in this country. My competition will now benefit because they didn't have to spend the time or money that I did to write these codes, so they can build their reactors at a lower price point because I just did the hard part for them. This is the reason why nobody wants to be first in the nuclear industry to build molten salt reactors and why we haven't seen any commercial innovation in this space. 
space. It's also the reason why the industry doesn't get enough investment from VCs uh, because it's too high risk. And no one in their right mind would invest that amount of money with that level of uncertainty. My solution to this problem is simple. Through one act of Congress, we appropriate funding, not to develop molten salt reactors, but to give the NRC the budget and the mandate to develop the regulatory framework that meets within the time constraints of the global energy market. Doing so will not favor any one design, but will make companies looking to develop molten salt reactors more attractive to investors and easier for them to design, build, and innovate. Number two, give the DOD a budget to build MSRs. The National Defense Authorization Act is an act of Congress that is pushed through every year and is unanimously passed by both houses of Congress without exception. The purpose of this act is to appropriate funding for the United States Department of Defense on everything they need money for, vet benefits, salaries, and procurement of new technology and resources. For years, they have either used the grid or imported fuel for diesel generators. The military recognizes the shortcomings of going with this approach and would like to use small reactors instead. By establishing a fully funded program to do this, we're able to accomplish several things. First off, we provide an opportunity for nuclear startups to compete for federal funding and develop this technology. Second, we take advantage of the Department of Defense's regulatory advantages to develop molten salt reactors. Many people don't know this, but the DOD has their own independent regulatory authority to develop nuclear reactors. It's how they can build and license reactors so quickly for Navy ships. And unlike the NRC, the Department of Defense isn't constrained by one type of reactor technology, so long as it meets the operational requirements of the U.S. military. So a startup could apply for their design, get funding to develop and test a prototype, and assuming their design does what they say it does at a fair price, get awarded a contract to power bases across this country, which are like small cities onto themselves. This in turn allows us to demo this technology to the NRC to eventually draft the regulatory framework for the commercial market. As another added bonus, the DOD can set operational constraints to weed out the best designs. One of my major criticisms is that there are too many cooks in the kitchen in this space, mainly because there are so many different ways to achieve fission. And when you talk about molten salt reactors, that just opens an entirely different category of nuclear technology. We're never going to get anywhere if we're all arguing this design is better or no, this one is. But through fair competition and where the Department of Defense can set the standards of what the design needs to achieve, i.e. can't melt down, has to be small enough to fit inside a shipping container, can't use water for cooling, and must be able to operate at low pressures, you can weed out the best designs and get them to market faster. Number three. Reappropriate the DOE's Waste Management Fund to directly fund waste-burning molten salt reactors. Before interviewing Ed File, we had an episode on Elysium Industries. In that video, which I will attach in the description below for anyone who hasn't seen it, I discuss how the Department of Energy should use the $30 billion fund collected to dispose of nuclear waste and spent fuel to fund reactors that burn said waste as fuel. Elysium, Moltex, and Copenhagen Atomics all have novel designs that can power our economy on spent fuel for the next three centuries. So please, just do it! Number four, develop a medical isotopic production facility. A few years back, the E-Generation Foundation drafted a proposal for what they refer to as the NASA Plumbrook Economic Development Corporation. This entity would utilize the NASA Plumbrook site in Sandusky, Ohio, to build six desktop-sized molten salt reactors to produce medical isotopes, such as Molly-99 and Technetium-99, that are used in medical diagnostic procedures, as well as plutonium-238 that NASA uses to power deep space probes. This site was originally considered for the aircraft reactor experiment in the 1950s, and though no reactor was ever built at the NASA site, they still have the site license to build one. Now, the reason for pushing Congress to fund this is pretty clear. Right now, the medical isotopes are not being made in the United States. Uh, they're being imported from research reactors like the ones in the Netherlands. And when these plants shut down, the only place we'll be able to get them is from Russia. So having a domestic supply to support a $2 billion a year medical diagnostic industry is an easy sell. We also can make sure that there's appropriate funding to have the NRC on site, not to permit the construction, but to be there from the moment you break ground to the second you flip on the reactor so they can draft the regulations to commercialize the technology. Number five, pass the Rare Earth Cooperative Act and develop a thorium storage co-op. 
Unlike previous requests I've made, this is one that already has legislation written in committee. In episode four, I discussed the thorium problem with rare earth mining and how Marco Rubio's Senate bill would resolve it by establishing a thorium storage co-op. This would develop a storage facility that would pull away the thorium liability from mining companies so they can mine and process rare earth elements. While they do, the co-op is collecting fees and they will be authorized by Congress to develop markets and uses for thorium. This will create a legislative pathway to allow thorium molten salt reactors to be built here while also addressing our shortcomings with a strategic resource. So there you have it. As you can see, I've put a fair amount of thought into this over a number of years, and if I were in any position to change the U.S. nuclear policy, I would strongly advocate for all of these things to be done within a relatively short time frame. I know it's unrealistic to hope that all of these legislative achievements could be done. However, I will stress that if any one of these were to come to fruition, it would significantly improve the U.S. nuclear industry for the better. It would even encourage nuclear startups like Copenhagen Atomics or Moltex to come here to develop their reactors. I'll leave it with this. For anyone who cares or watches these videos wondering what could be done on a personal level to see this technology get developed in our lifetime, if you live in the United States, find out who your congressional representatives are. Tell them you want to see action on this. If you want to share this video in the hopes that somebody with decision-making authority will do something about it, I say go for it. For now, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment below if you have any idea what I should cover next, unless it's a Maltex request. I've been getting several requests to talk about Maltex, and it's coming next week, I promise. For now, I'm Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic. Hey, thank you so much for uh, watching today's episode. Uh, we're a new podcast, so we really appreciate if you like this video and subscribe to it. My producer, Jessica, says that I'll get a cookie uh, for every new subscriber we get. Maybe if I'm good enough, she'll let me outside. Okay. Yeah, all right. Hmm. That's good. That's a good cooking.